rock, roll, ha! Hey everyone, it's Nathan with Crown and Caliber, and today we are going to be doing a buying guide. And there are not a lot of watches on the table. There are actually no watches on the table. The table's and not big enough. The table is not big enough, and I'll explain why in a second. Today we're going to be doing a buying guide on the brand Omega. Now in the past we've done buying guides on specific models and we've also ventured into some brands before, but today we chose to do the brand Omega in its entirety. And one of the reasons why is currently on Omega's website there are over 1600 unique models. Yeah, let that soak in for a second. Over 1600 unique models. And clearly we do not have a table big enough to have all of those models. And that is why ultimately we are choosing to do an Omega buying guide is because out of those 1600 unique models, there are four brand families. And we are gonna cover and highlight each one of them and the models that we think you need to know about. So you don't have to spend time sifting through all 1658 unique Omega models. So most people have probably at least heard of the brand Omega, but just a quick history. Omega was founded in 1848 by Louis Brandt, so they have definitely been around for quite some time, and they are currently owned by the parent company known as the Swatch Group. The Swatch Group is the owner of other brands like Hamilton, Longines, Blanc, Pond, Breguet, so quite a large group, and I think it's safe to say that Omega is definitely their poster child. So like I said, there are a ton of Omega models to cover. So this buying guide is going to be more of a general overview of these models and the families and give you more of a direction in which models you need to look out for. So there are four model families in the Omega lineup. There's the Constellation, the DeVille, and then the Bread and Butter, the Seamaster, and of course the Speedmaster family. So the Constellation family is where we're starting and currently that is made up of 523 unique models and the Constellation family can be broken down into two subfamilies. That is the Constellation and the Globemaster. So we will start with the namesake, the Constellation. This was a watch that debuted in 1950 and, and since then it has somewhat deviated from its original design. Most notably was the redesign in 1982, which is the watch that we more or less see today. And I think it's a safe assumption that that design very much feels like it's from 1982 and we'll just leave it at that. So moving on to the other subfamily in the Constellation family is the Globemaster. Now this watch actually has more of the Constellation heritage, most notably in what's called the pie pan dial, but also in the little subtle touch to some of the fonts as well as the star on the dial. Now, why we love the Constellation is because this is the first Omega watch to feature a Metos certified movement, the Omega Caliber 8900. Now, the Omega Constellation Globemaster debuted in 2015, and this watch packed a punch. Like we said, this Metos certified movement was the first of its kind, and Metos is another third-party Swiss organization that tests movements similar to COSC, but is often thought of as a more stringent form of testing. For example, Metos tests not only the movement, but the movement actually cased up as an actual watch. So when Omega released this Globemaster in 2015, it was a pretty big deal. And so if you are interested in the Constellation family, our recommendation is you look at the Constellation Globemaster. It is a clean, austere design with some serious watch technology that packs an oomph. It can be had in stainless steel, precious metals, and classic colors like a white dial and a blue dial. It is a perfect example of a modern day Omega. So the next family that we're gonna look at in the Omega buying guide is the DeVille family. Now currently the DeVille family has 447 unique models. We're not gonna break down every subfamily because there's a number of them. But as a whole, I would say the DeVille family is uh, the Omega dress family. It is also where Omega kind of pushes the envelope. Um, some really cool things like the Hour Vision um, has some really crazy case designs, but it's also where we see Omega implement things like turbiums. So, as a whole, the DeVille family and its subfamilies is Omega's dress line, but we think that the subfamily to focus on is the Tresor subfamily. So the Tresor subfamily was first introduced in 2014, and this was effectively a modern take on a classic dress watch. But what was most impressive is probably the movement. It was a manual wound Omega caliber, and it took up the entire case back. It was designed for that watch, and it looked magnificent. But where things really kicked off is in 2019 when they introduced the Metas certified caliber in the watch. 
Now, I think this watch is definitely a dress watch, um, but it is very much Omega's take on a dress watch. So from a purist standpoint, the Tresor is probably not considered a dress watch in the sense that a traditional dress watch is fairly small in size, very thin, and generally time only. Now, the Tresor is a 40 millimeter watch, albeit still is pretty thin, it's under 11 millimeters, but it is a bigger watch. It also does include the date as well as a classic three-hand design with a second hand. So it feels very much like a modern dress watch. It feels very much much like an Omega. And like I said, this movement is amazing. And since 2019, it featured the Omega Caliber 89 series line, which is Meta certified. And still when you turn it over, the entire case is filled with that movement. And again, it feels very Omega. It is a bold looking movement. And as a, as a note, you can tell on the dial when it has a Meta certified movement because it will say master chronometer. So in 2014, this watch would have said, master coaxial and that master referred to the gauss rating where now it says coaxial master chronometer so a small aside but a little tip on if you see the dial of an omega you can tell if it has one of those metos certified movements so Again, wrapping up the DeVille line, we think that if you're interested in a dress watch from Omega, then look no further than the Omega DeVille Tresor. So next up in our Omega buying guide, we are gonna be looking at the Seamaster family. Now there are currently 570 models in the Seamaster family, and that can be divided into four subfamilies. That is the Heritage models, the Aquaterra, the Seamaster 300, and the Planet Ocean. We're gonna focus on the latter three, but I will briefly address the Heritage family. This includes a lot of uh, really unique designs from Omega over the years. Things like the Bullhead Seamaster Chronograph, the Ploprof, and even some of those 1957 reissues like the Railmaster and the original Seamaster. But there are just so many models to cover. We are gonna to choose to focus on the three main families. So let's start with the Aquaterra. Now the Aquaterra was first introduced in 2002. And I think it's a safe assumption to say that Omega was making the Aquaterra as a direct competitor to the Datejust. It is a great everyday watch. It has a day complication and it has plenty of water resistance for everyday activities. And it is popular. There are currently 325 unique Aquaterra models. So let's go ahead and hit some of the highlights in its history. Like we said, it was introduced in 2002. In 2008, Omega introduced the Caliber 8500, the first in-house Omega Caliber inside the Aquaterra. And along with that, we first saw the Teak pattern dial that has become synonymous with the Aquaterra. But we wanna focus on 2017 in the introduction of the Omega Caliber 8900 and 8800. Those were the two Metas certified calibers that now reside in the Aquaterra. You may remember the 8900 was the Meta certified movement that was first released in 2015 in the Globemaster, and it has now trickled down into the Aquaterra in the larger 41 millimeter case size. The Aquaterra is an exceptionally great watch. It can be had in many different metals from stainless steel to precious metal to mixed metals, plenty of different dial colors. And this is also a really good time to make a side point. Omega does a lot of additions, things like special editions, limited editions, numbered editions, and those can run the gamut from things like heritage models to specific sporting events. So if you end up seeing a colorway that is different, it could be because it falls into one of those categories. And there are plenty throughout the Aquaterra family that you will see. But we think some of the best Aquaterra models are the classic ones. So if you're interested in an Aquaterra, we have two recommendations. The 38 millimeter coaxial master chronometer Aquaterra in stainless steel, and we love the blue dial. Or if you can swing the larger case size, the 41 millimeter coaxial master chronometer Aquaterra in stainless steel with a really nice green dial. So the next subfamily that we're gonna look at in the Seamaster lineup is the Seamaster 300M or the Seamaster Professional. Now the Seamaster name can trace its history back all the way to the 40s, but the Seamaster Professional as we know of it today can trace its history back to 1993. And that is the Seamaster that we think of today. It's got the sculpted case, the sculpted bezel, classic wave dial, and the now classic five link bracelet. And outside of the Speedmaster, this Seamaster is probably second as the most iconic of watches, and that is thanks to James Bond. Since 1995 and the release of GoldenEye, James Bond has worn an Omega. And to this day, James Bond is still wearing an Omega. And I think this resurgence in the help of James Bond has definitely cemented the Seamaster Professional as a stalwart in the Omega lineup. So since 1993, we have seen many iterations of the Seamaster Professional, but we're gonna focus on 2018 and its 25th anniversary and probably the largest update. 
not only did it increase to 42 millimeters in case size, it brought back that classic wave dial. And of course, we still had the sculpted case, the sculpted bezel, and that now classic five link bracelet. But paired with it was all of those modern Omega elements. We had a ceramic dial, we had a ceramic bezel, and we had the caliber 8800 coaxial master chronometer. So all of the modern elements of Omega with that classic 90s styling. And so if you are interested in a Seamaster professional, we recommend keeping it classic. Stainless steel, black dial, black bezel. It is Omega's no-nonsense dive watch. All right, so last up in our Seamaster family is the Planet Ocean subfamily. Now the Planet Ocean was first introduced in 2005 and has seen great success. There are now currently 124 unique Planet Ocean models. And I think this is a point where Omega went ahead and said, we are going to make a direct competitor to the Submariner. And this is a really interesting point too, because I like to think of the Submariner as a watch that focuses on luxury and heritage whereas the Planet Ocean focuses on luxury and innovation. And that's because a watch being introduced in 2005 doesn't have to worry about heritage. It can consistently update and make the best version of itself. And you do see this through most of the lines of Omega watches, but I think you see it most in the Planet Ocean because of how new of a design it is. Since its introduction in 2005, the Planet Ocean has gone through three generations. Most recently in 2016 with the introduction of the Metis certified caliber 8800 and 8900. It can be had in multiple case sizes. Uh, currently it is in a 39 and a half millimeter and a 43 and a half millimeter case size. And on that, a few of the notable characteristics of the Planet Ocean are its classic three link style bracelet, its ceramic liquid metal bezel, its trapezoidal indices, and probably most notable is the case thickness. The Planet Ocean line is thick. And I mean thick. We are ranging from watches around 14 millimeters thick to some of the Planet Oceans with complications upwards of 19 millimeters thick. And that is a thick watch. For comparison, the Submariner comes in right around 13 millimeters. But I think this, again, goes back to that pursuit of technology and innovation. The Seamaster Planet Ocean has a 600 meter water resistance, which is double that of a Submariner, and the Planet Oceans have sapphire case backs. Omega wants you to see that caliber 8800 or 8900 that they've put so much technology into. And so having a deeper water resistance and having a sapphire case back is going to make for a thicker watch. So if you are after an Omega and you want something that rivals the Submariner, then look no further than the Seamaster Planet Ocean. And again, we think if you're going with this watch, keep it classic. Go with either the 39 and a half millimeter Seamaster Planet Ocean in the classic black dial or the 43 and a half millimeter Seamaster Planet Ocean, and you guessed it, a black dial. All right, so the last family we need to cover in the Omega buy-in guide is the Speedmaster family. And to me, this is unequivocally the defining watch for Omega, the Omega Speedmaster. And before we jump into this family of watches, I do think it's time to make a quick aside. There are other Omegas, this is a hot take, there are other Omegas that have chronographs. There are Seamasters, there are Planet Oceans, there are Aquaterras, there are even DeVilles that have the chronograph function. But if you are going and getting a chronograph from Omega, then you need to get none other than a Speedmaster. Full stop, hot take, that's what I'm saying. We are not looking at those watches. So back to the Speedmaster. The Speedmaster from Omega has remained design-wise practically unchanged for 60 years. And it's also worth noting that there are currently in the entire Speedmaster family only 118 models. So you can see that Omega, while still pushing innovation, has decided to let it lie. Why fix something that is not broken? It is a classic design, it is a tried and true design, and it is practically perfect. So we're gonna jump in and we're gonna discuss the Speedmaster, but we're gonna discuss it in a different way. Rather than talking about the subfamilies, which there are, we're gonna talk about it in terms of movements. The reason we are choosing to do this is because of that heritage that is in the Speedmaster, the movement is imperative. It is extremely important, and that is how we're gonna break it down. So we're gonna break it down into effectively three categories. We're gonna break it down into the 1861 slash 3861 slash 321, see a trend there, the 3300 or the Omega 3330, and lastly, the 9000. So the 9300 and the 9900. So let's get started. 
So our first subfamily of movements that we're going to discuss about the Speedmaster is the caliber 321 1861 3861. There's going to be a ton of numbers, but this is really good information. So the caliber 321 is a Lamania architecture chronograph movement. It is effectively the OG. This is the movement that was in the Speedmaster that first made it to the moon. This is the Speedmaster professional movement, the caliber 321, but it has seen in many iterations. Most ubiquitous would be the 1861 that has been effectively in the Speedmaster for nearly 50 years and just recently has been retired for the newest one, the 3861. These movements are pretty much what make up the Speedmaster professional. The newest one, the 3861, introduces things like a coaxial escapement, a silicon hairspring, and yes, you guessed it, is now Metis certified, which is a really big deal and I think shows a truly innovative step forward for a watch that ultimately should be NASA flight certified in that level of anti-magnetism and just accuracy. So the newest Speedmaster Professional includes the 3861 Meta certified manual wound still Lamania architecture movement. But basically all these numbers aside, 3861, 1861, 321, what you need to know is that is often the movement that is in the Speedmaster Professional, the Moonwatch. And so more often than not, if you are seeing a Speedmaster Professional, then it is going to have one of those movements. So if you are interested in a Speedmaster and you want that classic Speedmaster movement, you want the Lamania architecture, manual wound, then we think that the best option is none other than the Speedmaster Professional. And we actually think that the new Speedmaster Professional is the best option. And ultimately the reason is, is because Omega has not allowed heritage and history to impede that innovation. And what I mean by that is the 1861 was starting to feel a little dated in its performance. And with the addition of, like I said, things like a silicon hairspring, a coaxial escapement, and ultimately being Meta certified, the new Speedmaster Professional truly feels like a watch that's meant to go to the moon. So the next subfamily movement series that we're gonna look at is the 3300 series, or specifically the Omega Caliber 3330. Now this movement currently resides mostly in the Speedmaster 38 series, which is a smaller Speedmaster and stylistically deviates a little from the classic Speedmaster. These subdials are more of an ellipse or an oval. The case shape seems to be pretty similar to um, a Speedmaster, but I think all in all is, if I can put it bluntly, somewhat of a miss for the Speedmaster lineup. But that movement is what we wanna focus on. The Nomega Caliber 3330 is a fully integrated column wheel chronograph with a coaxial escapement. And that is not something to bulk at. And in past years, that has been used in the Speedmaster Racing Series. This was a 40 millimeter automatic Speedmaster that retained a lot of that classic Speedmaster style. It had some really interesting dial textures. You could even get them in a cool blue with a brush dial. It is an awesome watch that I think flies totally under the radar. So if you want an automatic Speedmaster with an integrated column wheel chronograph and not necessarily the heritage of that, 1861 or caliber 321, then we recommend the older Omega Speedmaster Racing Series. All right, so rounding out this Speedmaster family, we're gonna be looking at the Omega Caliber 9000 movement subfamily. And this can be broken down into two calibers, the 9300 and the 9900. And this is kind of what we like to think of as the logical conclusion on what the Speedmaster can be when the technological envelope is pushed. Now, one of the most defining characteristics of these movements is the fact that they only have two subdials instead of three like a traditional chronograph. And what that means is that in the three o'clock subdial, there is both the minute counter and the hour counter. So like I said, this is Omega pushing that technological envelope in the Speedmaster to what it can be. And we're gonna start with the 9300. The Omega Caliber 9300 is an automatic column wheel chronograph with a coaxial escapement. It can be found most notably in two distinct watches, the Omega Speedmaster 57, as in referencing the year 1957, and the Omega Speedmaster Dark Side of the Moon. Now, even though they have the same movement, these are vastly different. The Speedmaster 57, albeit it has a lot of technology, is drawing on a lot of elements of heritage for its design. It is fairly thick because of that Omega Caliber 9300. So that styling is very much this new vintage styling with cues from the original Speedmasters. Now on the other side, you have the Speedmaster Dark Side of the Moon. And this definitely is more in that technological advancement. You have that 9300 caliber and it is in a 44 and a quarter millimeter case. So it is a larger 
timepiece for sure. And this definitely is the kind of case study in exotic materials. Omega has made entire watches, case, crown, pushers, buckle, everything out of ceramic. They have used chunks of meteorite in the dial. This is them pushing that envelope. And those are kind of the two sides of that caliber 9300. But we're gonna go a step further, and that is the caliber 9900. And this is where we definitely wanna land the kind of logical conclusion of the technologically advanced Speedmaster. And that is because the 9900 is, you guessed it, the Metis certified caliber 9000. It is the automatic column wheel chronograph with a coaxial escapement. It has twin barrels for an extended power reserve. It has that updated escapement so that it can now be Meta certified. And it is Omega putting everything into the Speedmaster. And I think the best example of this watch is the new Omega Speedmaster Racing Coaxial Master Chronometer Series. And the reason this is such a great example is this is, like I've said, no expenses spared, the Speedmaster pushed to its technological evolution. You have that 44 and a quarter millimeter Speedmaster case with the classic asymmetrical design, but inside of it is the Mega Caliber 9900. That's that automatic column wheel coaxial chronograph that has twin barrels for an extended power reserve and is now Metis certified. Technology is being pushed. But it doesn't stop there. This Speedmaster continues to forego some of the classic elements. This now has a sapphire front and back, it's more scratch resistant. It now has a ceramic tachometer bezel with liquid metal for the inlays. Also extremely scratch resistant and far more durable. It's just pushing the envelope in every way. Really cool nods to previous models are the checkered minute track for the chronograph seconds hand, pops of orange color on the black dial variant or the white dial variant. It is through and through a Speedmaster, but it has just been pushed to its technological evolution. It is a Speedmaster that you can use every day. So if you are after the pinnacle in technology for a Speedmaster and Heritage can kind of take a back seat, then the Speedmaster Racing Coaxial Master Chronometer is absolutely the Speedmaster for you. So as we wrap up our Omega buying guide, I figured I would let you guys know what my personal favorite Omega is, and it is a Speedmaster. It is the Omega Speedmaster First Omega in Space. And I love this watch because I think it does a great job blending the old and the new. It has that 1861 caliber, that Lamania architecture, and it has it in a um, slightly smaller kind of vintage inspired case design, but it mixes in things like a sapphire crystal, which is much better for everyday wear because I'm probably not going to the moon. So that is my favorite Omega, guys. I would love to hear in the comments below what your favorite Omega watch is, what you think about our Omega buying guide. Let us know any questions you have about specific models. Let us know if you think we missed some model. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.